it's 8 o'clock on a Wednesday night, and we're at the Wall Street Pub and Grill. That must mean it's time for the Tiffin Dragon Football Radio Show. Russ Snyder, voice of the Dragons, alongside head coach Chris Reiser, and three student athletes tonight on this Wednesday night. Coach, how are we doing tonight, sir? Doing awesome, Russ. Thanks again for having us. Absolutely. Happy to have you. Go ahead and introduce your student athletes who are sitting to your left. We'll get yeah. to know more about oh, these young to men To my later. left is A.J. Nikolai, uh, kicker, quarterback. Um, here we have Blake Darnell, uh, tight ends. And here we have Zach Goki, one of our one of our linebackers. So we got a good got a good cast of guys tonight. Well, you got all three phases covered, right? No doubt. All three phases no covered doubt. tonight. So first of all, let me ask, what did you do last Saturday? Last Saturday, yeah. I was um, I was I was battling the crowd at Great Wolf Lodge oh, with, nice. uh, with Hawk. We were doing the indoor water park. Got some family time we in. Were, we were killing it. Yeah, awesome. We had a blast. We had awesome. a blast. So did. Um, did about 860 slides and uh, it <laughs> survived was, them all. It, we did. It was as good as it gets. So now it's cool to get away, be with the family a little bit, um, and just kind of recharge the battery a little bit. That's what I was going to say. It's those uh, times of the year where you get that bye week that it doesn't happen every every year to a football team, especially at this level. But be able to just de- decompress a little bit, yeah. get away from the game, kind of helps you re- refocus when you get back to it. It does. No, it it it, um, it certainly kind of it, it won it. I think for our team, I think it gave them a chance to heal. Gives right. you a chance to get fresh. And then I think really mentally it allows you to kind of take a break, decompress a little bit, um, you know, maybe get caught up on some schoolwork, just get right. caught up on life in general, and then be able to kind of refocus and move back in the last part of the season. So it came at a good time. I was just going to ask you that. See, we've been doing this too long. You're answering right. my questions before right. I'm asking them to you. But I was going to say, the bye week, bye week at the end of the season probably pays more dividends for your kids than it would regular, early in the season yeah. just because of the bumps and bruises you get. Yeah, I believe that it will. You know, as a coach, you kind of go back and forth of um, – you want to give enough time, but you don't want to get rusty, and so mm-hmm. you kind of battle that. But I think our guys did a good job of when it was time to practice, they practiced, and they practiced right. hard, and they practiced well, and they practiced with energy. And um, when it was time to relax, they relaxed. You know, and it's and also so, good for your assistant um, coaches to get away and get refocused. Yeah, as well. no, it was cool. You know, I, I was we're, we were all able to spend a lot more time with our kids. Um, you know, we were able to have Halloween with the family, and and so it was it was really good to be able to do the things that are more important than football, um, especially as nice younger ones time. as you have. Yeah, no, it was they cool. We don't had, recognize uh, you a lot had, during football. Had uh, had Batman and had Tony the Tiger, and so we were <laughs> we were rocking and rolling, man. Awesome. Well, the Dragons last time on the field was uh, up at Lake Erie. We won't get too far into that game because that was a couple weeks ago before the bye week. But still, we'll touch on it here briefly. Another game where your offense put up a lot of points, and uh, there was a game that uh, you know was close for a little while there. It was a strange game to begin with, and then Lake Erie kind of tried to battle back a little bit. Their quarterback had a very nice game, and then the uh, Dragons though just kind of flexed the muscle a little bit and pulled away in the second half and got yourself another hard fought victory. No matter where you're playing, a victory on the road is a great victory to go get. Yeah, there's no doubt. It's hard to win games in college football, right? I thought, um, I thought, yeah, you summed it up pretty well. One, I, I thought, you know, kind of the 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 hidden hero, right? We had two special forces touchdowns. So, yeah. um, you know, we had a punt block for a touchdown and we had a kickoff return for a touchdown. Um, and those were huge, right? That's yeah. 14 points that, that you just Before you can't your offense did for. anything, really. Right. And so that was huge. And then I thought offensively, you know, in, in limited possessions, we played pretty efficient football. I thought defensively, um, Lake Curie had a really hot hand early. Yeah. You know, the quarterback was on fire. They had two good receivers that, that really we had good coverage. We were, we were playing good defense and they were making really nice plays right. and so you know it was fun honestly as a coach it was like dang man those guys are playing their tails off and so but I thought defensively in the second half we really got stops at timely at timely situations yeah. and so that's what it is in college football like you know the teams are going to move the ball they're going to score you know they're mm-hmm. going to get stops and and you have to be able to win situational football and you have to be able to overcome little deficits here and there in the ebb and flow of the game and then when it really is you know time to get to get it done I thought our defense rose the occasion and Absolutely. was able to do that. Well, AJ, you're on the special teams, and we'll get to meet you a little bit uh, more later, uh, uh, later on here in the show. But first of all, welcome to the program. But it's always nice to be uh, get some points with the special teams. Even though you weren't on the field on that play, you had to be pretty proud of the rest of you guys on the special teams getting the first points on the board in that game up at Lake Erie. Absolutely. I like uh – I like watching them do their thing and then uh, run down and grabbing my helmet and run out there and kick an extra point. Well, yeah, you're not really used to getting ready for an extra point when your right. punt when your punt uh, punt team's out there on yeah, the field. Right. But uh, yeah, I, was, I think I was standing at the complete opposite side. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him block the punt and take it into the end zone. And I was like, oh crap! I had to well, run down and grab my helmet and get out there. All right, Blake. How about uh, Blake Darnell tied in with the Dragon Squad? Now your your team's already up. 
before you really even get a chance to get on the field and do much of anything. It's got to really build your confidence knowing your special teams are getting you on the board. Defense is putting you in position to score before you guys really get a chance to go out there and show what you guys know you can do. Yeah, it was. I think it was like halfway through the first quarter and we hadn't even stepped on the field yet. I'm like, are we ever going to be able to get out there? <laughs> right. But it's awesome to see special teams getting points on the board like that. And I'm sure it increases your confidence knowing our, our, our special teams already got our offense already got our offense a, a, a bump here. Got us some points on the board before we even get on the field. So it's got to make you feel good seeing your buddies score touchdowns on the special teams as well but yeah. just uh you know dumb guys putting the points on the board for you and i had a chance to show off what you guys can do on the offensive yeah, side it takes it takes a lot of pressure off offense so all right mr goki how about uh, on the defensive side when you get to see those special teams guys score especially early on in the game kind of help set the tone for the rest of you guys on the defensive side of the football yeah I, it gives us that uh 14 point cushion so the defense can relax uh you get all the nerves out uh first couple possessions you're able to stop them then get two uh two scores off of special right. special forces it's huge and uh you know seeing seeing uh you know my linebackers who are on the special forces that's really awesome for me because we're all such like a close group of friends and everything but uh overall just everybody on the special forces they work so hard and they deserve it and after one of those touchdowns your defense able to pin your special teams pinned them deep but like the one yard line so you gotta yeah. love that as a defensive player when you're coming out on the field and they're at the one yard line it's one of those times where the defenders start salivating a little bit start licking your chops and yep. getting ready to pin your ears back a little bit at that situation right yeah yeah when teams have to go 99 yards just to uh, get a chance at the end zone you know it's always great. It's always yes. great for the defense. Putting them behind the eight ball and they have to go 99 yards, coach. You got to feel confident in your defense to go get the job done, and you know that the other team's got bad field position, especially as poor as that. No doubt, no doubt. And our guys, our guys, they you know smell blood in the water in those situations, and, and they do a great job coming through. Well, Dragons right now, we're we'll sitting at seven and one with two games left. We have Hillsdale coming up this week, Senior Day. Um, it's always a special time when the yeah. seniors get the chance to get recognized. Their families get to come yes. down on the field with them as well and uh, talk a little bit about some of those seniors. You, we might have a bunch of them on next week. Possibly your whole entire senior crew coming yeah, over we here. Yeah, want to have the whole crew. Want to have the whole crew. No, I, I, you know, you do such a great job with this show, and and I think it's a neat experience for for our our student athletes to be able to have, you know be on a radio show and and. Um, and, and really kind of be broadcasted as, as guys that are doing it the right way. And so we'll have the whole group on. That'll we'll be fun. To, it'll be a crazy, wacky day, but um, we'll make it work, and it'll be a cool experience for those guys. So really, you know, they've done a tremendous job in, in helping us build the culture that we want as a football program. And, you know, I'm, I'm proud of, of the guys that we have. And I, I say it all the time, I, I, I love the group of guys that we have. Right. You know, good players, obviously, but – but we've got um, a really unique group of young men that care about each other, and the seniors are, are kind of the, the ones that are really kind of bringing that culture and, and uh, doing a great job implementing it. Well, you coming in your first year, I mean, you're, you're building your staff. You keep a couple guys you know, on to help you know, with the uh, joining forces, if you will, but you probably have to lean on some of these upperclassmen a little bit in your first year, especially because you don't know a, a lot of the personalities of some of these kids who are returning on the football team. And these upperclassmen probably got a pretty good grip on how these some of these young men, how they tick, how they talk, I guess, if you will. Yeah, no doubt. No, I mean, you know, I say it all the time. These guys have made it really easy on me and, and my staff. And, um, you know, we've just really tried to come in and, and get to know them and build relationships. And, and um, you know, they have – uh, from day one, there hasn't been any kickback. You right. know, they've they've been very receptive of me, and I can't I can't say how grateful I am of that. You know, and so um, it's it's made my job a lot easier to come in and and do some of the things that we're doing, and and I'm just thankful and and blessed that they're here. You Absolutely. Know? Well, I right, talked to Coach about what he did on the bye week. Blake, I know you said you uh, went up to Michigan and did some fishing. Tell us a little bit about your trip. Yeah, I uh, spent the weekend musky fishing at Lake St. Clair. Caught a couple muskies. Caught a couple. How muskies? many muskies? I caught two. My buddy caught his first one too. So, so they how big? Any? Mine were forty-two inches, and his I think were forty-one. They fight you pretty good coming yeah, in, do they? Absolutely, they hit hard. So. That's the fun part of it, oh, isn't it? It's a blast. It's, it's a blast. blast. It's addicting. It's a disease. <laughs> well, that's a lot of people that uh, I know. I'm friends with that fish. They fish. Like every minute they get a chance, they're taking a boat to the lake, or yeah. they're going to this fishing spot or that fish spot. It's something. People like to fish. They learn to do it young, and usually yep. it's like a grandpa or a dad gets them into it, and then something they continue the rest of your life. Absolutely. So it's, it's a good time, cool stuff. All right, Zach, how about you? What would you do on that uh, bye week last week? Uh, bye week, uh, first thing I did, I let my body recover yeah, towards the end of the season. Everybody's a little banged up. So yeah. thankful, thankful for the weekend off. Well, right. But uh, went home and spent time with family. That's so, important, yeah. just as important as fishing. I guess probably more important than yeah. fishing. <laughs> No, they, they support me so much, and uh, whenever I get the free time to go back home, I always go home and see them. 
Well, the Goki name has been a part of Tiffany University football for quite a while. I probably met you when you were a high school kid when your brother was playing here first, I yep, bet. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's been a few years. It's been a few years. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. the Goki name has been a part of the Dragon football. I mean, for a while, I've been here doing this since 2011, and I got to see, you know, I've got to see all you guys, as, uh, every game you guys have played with Tiffany University Dragons. So I, I've enjoyed that as well. Yep. Goki's been here since 2013. There you go. 2013. There you go. All right, AJ, how would you spend your time there on the bye week, bud? You know, I kind of took uh, took my weekend and went home. I hadn't been home in three or four months, so I decided to go back home to Mansfield and hang out with my uh, mom and dad and my brother and sister. It's always important. Yeah. Always important. Yeah. All right, Coach, uh, Hillsdale coming up this weekend, a team that uh, conference champion from a year ago. Yeah. Uh, they they uh, had to replace a couple of key spots coming in this season, especially at the quarterback spot. But Hillsdale's a team that's going to give everybody fits every single year. Yeah. Even if they have a down year, they're probably going to win six or seven games before the season's over with. So I'm sure that they're going to pose the same type of problems that they pose opponents in the GMAC every single year. Yeah, no, the first thing that stands out is is they're always going to play hard. Mm -hmm. They're going to be really fundamentally sound, and they're always really well coached. I have I have tremendous respect for their coaching staff. I think that they have a very well-thought-out plan, yeah. um, and they execute the plan very well. And so we certainly have to play good football. We have to execute in our own right, um, but we'll be ready for it. Yeah, Hillsdale this coming Saturday, as I said, senior day, 1 o'clock start at uh, Frost Cowanow Stadium before the Dragons finish up the final week over at Finley to finish out, which it's hard to believe. First of all, it's hard to believe we're in November. But I was talking to Blake before we, before everybody else got here that there's only two weeks left in a regular season at Tiffany University football in 2019. And, you know, every year it seems to go faster. And this year, really being your first year, Coach, I'm sure that it's just been a whirlwind. It's just flown right by. Yeah, no, it seems like each week it's faster, you know, to <laughs> right. be honest. It really does. It's like um, – it's like we're we're just kind of in a whirlwind, but you know, in a, in a good way. You know, I I love it. I love game week. I love mm -hmm. the preparation. I love practice. You know, I, well, I just I, I love it. You that's know? winning. So, winning no makes winning look makes you look forward to coming to practice on yeah. Monday. Losing a football game on a Saturday doesn't make you look forward to coming in on a Monday. But you know, winning breeds the want to. It's going to yeah. breed your confidence. It breeds the want to as well. Not only you know to on the practice field, but in the weight room as well. I mean, winning football games just is a drives that competitive spirit it does it does no and, and uh it certainly helps and and we've got a self-motivated group and that helps too and right. so um they're a fun group to be at practice with you know because they practice and they practice hard right. um practice well and so it um no we're excited man it, it any any week is a good week for us to have an opportunity to play mm -hmm. our best football game and um I, like i said to the team whether it's the giants or it's the you know the the tornadoes right, right. We're, we're gonna we're gonna come out and we're gonna play hard we're gonna play we're going to play Dragon Way football. Speaking of tornadoes, another part of the exciting uh, time of the year, high school football playoffs are starting playoffs. this week. Playoff. So you guys' high schools make the playoffs this week? Oh, this year? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> mine, mine neither. Mine neither. <laughs> mine neither. <laughs> that was yours neither, right? Oh, wow. No, tough well, that was year. a great reaction from you guys. Tough, tough year for the <laughs> It's like I just told you the funniest joke you heard in a while. <laughs> All right, let's get to meet these young men. Coach, let's start here with AJ first. That's a, I've heard your world-renowned – podcasts tell us uh, about your podcast so uh, my one of my best friend uh joey vor he uh, goes to arizona state university and he uh he works for a few media companies out there okay and so he he's got his own uh the joseph vor podcast and uh, i'm a recurring guest on there perfect every once in a while and we we talk sports movie life all that all that good stuff and then it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun well you can always come to the wtud studio and record your own podcast down there if you Absolutely. want sometime Absolutely. but uh, sure. so you're from uh you where'd you go to high school lexington yeah lexington, lexington high school now my broadcast partner that does the home games with me he's an assistant football coach at winford high school okay. and he says there's some girls there that said hey i know i heard you you're doing stuff at tiffany university right we know aj nikolai so you got a uh, you got a little fan base over there, and I'd be Cyrus here, so I'd share that with you. Well, I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So tell us about the path that brought you to Tiffany University. You grew up in Lexington. Did you play any other high school sports? Yeah, I played basketball, and I like kind of ran track well, on and off with that. Uh, but actually, it's kind of a funny story because Coach Gilbert here, he mm -hmm. uh, coached my dad in high school. Oh, wow. And uh, then my dad coached with him at Mansfield Senior. Yep. And uh, so I kind of he recruited me my senior year of high school, and I really I really liked him a lot. A lot of respect for him. I've always known him, and uh, came up here. Really liked the program, liked the campus, all that stuff, and uh, decided to come here. What is it about kick? I mean, kicking's a tough game. 
I mean, well, kicking's a tough game. I mean, what are you, 41-42 to 42 on extra points this year, I, uh, this I, season I, so I far? You made five field goals as yeah. well. So, yeah. Coach and I talked about earlier in the year, the kicking game was a little up and down at the start of the year, but you really seems like you've stepped in there and taken control of that and solidified that spot for the Dragons. Yeah, I've really, really tried to, you know, kind of take that as my role. I don't really identify with these guys as a kicker, but, I mean, <laughs> They like to call me a kicker, even though. Well, it says QB slash kicker right. on your bio, so. Right, yeah. That, sure. <laughs> sure. But, Is that yeah. the one you enlist the emergency quarterback coach? Is that where AJ's name? No, comes? AJ's awesome. AJ, you know, he didn't he didn't plan on being the kicker, right? Right. And, and we we kind of fell on some hard times, and you know, I, I didn't even know he kicked. You know, I he just been in the quarterback room, wants to be a coach, and so he's been in, been in been in our room and really kind of learning and growing as a as a coach growing in knowledge and right. and all of a sudden we needed a kicker and so he's like well I used to kick and I didn't know he used to kick so I said all right try and kick and and here he is our kicker and he's 41 of 42 on extra yep. points and done a tremendous job the cool thing about AJ is whatever his role is he embraces it right and and he has he's got a, a very unique confidence about him that he can play in tough environments and believe in himself and go out and get the job done, which I think is worth its weight in gold. Especially at the kicking position. You no need doubt. to have that confidence because no a lot doubt. of the kicking ends up up there between the, between have some the juice. years. Yeah. Absolutely. So you chose Tiffany University out of high school. What did you choose to study here at TU? Uh, so I came in undecided business, and uh, I've kind of focused on marketing, marketing, but I, I really, I really want to coach when I'm done, get into college coaching somewhere, and hopefully – progress from whatever that takes probably away. continue your degree as yeah. you're working yeah. your way around yeah. the uh, the coaching something, ranks something in the master's programs of wherever i'm at and then uh and then whatever wherever coaching takes me is where i'll go and you see all the hours these guys put oh, in yeah. and all that stuff and you and that Absolutely. appeals yeah, to you i, I try to <laughs> kind of stick around with them as much as i can just to kind of why not if that's what right, you want to do right, exactly right. just to kind of get a taste of it and really see what it's about so you want to be a coach when you're all done, all said and done, and you got to take the pads off yep. after you're done at yep. Tiffany University. Yep. Well, we wish you the best, best of luck, man, and uh, continued success. All right, your turn, Blake. You're, where's your hometown, man? Uh, New Lexington, Ohio. Oh, which one was first? Mine, probably. Why would it be called New, then? I don't know. I think it's from <laughs> Kentucky, so like they came up here maybe, and so I, I have no idea. All right, tell us your. I'm just messing with you. Just tell us your. Uh, tell us your path. To, uh, got you to Tiffany University. Um, graduated high school in 2015. Uh, came up here, and my major was in Homeland Security counterterrorism. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess that's where I'm at now. I graduated last May, and I'll now uh, pursue my master's in criminal behavior. So you came up here. That's a great program. If you're going to come to Tiffany University, that's one of our key programs yeah. here at the, at the university. So when you found out that we had the major you wanted and football was in the future here, he's like, all right, yeah, cool. Let's go be a dragon. All uh, right. Yep. That was it. All right. And so you're going to finish your master's degree when you're done playing ball? Yeah. And then what's the plan after that? Uh, I want to get into law enforcement, like uh, the federal level. I'm not sure what, maybe like a U.S. Marshal, something like that. Well, we heard this morning, Coach, uh, FBI has just hired a yeah. Tiffany University alum. To, it was yeah. an intern full-time. So we're getting those dragon claws, I guess, into yeah. those different areas. And it's just a great pathways for students. And that's a great uh, that's a great uh, you know uh, path that you want to take. That's fantastic. Absolutely. So talk a little bit about your time here, Tiffany. Well, first, in high school, did you play any other sports? Yeah, I, uh, I threw in track, and uh, I played basketball for two years, but – just skip that part. <laughs> Just skip that part. <laughs> it was fun, but I wasn't the best player, I guess. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was it. I just threw. That was that was the only other thing I did. Did you throw. contemplate doing any of the uh, track stuff here at Tiffany University? I mean, that's did, a pretty, I did a pretty good bit. program. I had a, a couple, like, small, small, small schools ask me about it, but I just ended up going with football because that was my favorite. Let's talk a little bit about football here at Tiffany University. You play the tight end spot. You're pretty – good size guy for playing the uh for playing that position what is it about playing the tight end that you like well i came in as a d tap or d end and then they switched me i think my sophomore year um and i was like i was really surprised but honestly i I like it better i liked offense better anyways um i just like the physicality of it i guess um I like blocking people in high school, so and I like doing it now. Well, so. you got a nice group of running backs behind you. It's yeah. got to be a lot of fun to block for Absolutely. those guys because probably a lot of the times you're just getting engaged in that block. Next thing you know, they're yep. gone. So yeah. 
You don't have to hold them very long. So no, you got a talented group back there. Absolutely. And then on the also, I mean, you got a couple a couple tight ends that get a lot of playing time for the Dragons. Then you mix that with our wide receiving core and uh, your you guys' work with uh, Nick Watson. Talk a little bit about uh, the work that all you guys put in with Nick. Uh, I mean, we don't. I guess we're a big part of the offense. I guess um, pass game. You know, we we get a couple routes here and there, and. Um, you know, it's it's fun blocking for Nick too and pass pro. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't matter. We we put a lot of work in. He brings up blocking more than he talks about catching the football. That's Coach, why we love, love him. I was gonna say That's you why I love that. Yeah, no, I don't care. As these long as guys, I'll out. brag on. I mean, this is the quietest that Blake's been maybe in the last four years. And so Five years. I do want that known. I, I had to I had to tell him before he came on. You got to be careful now. You got I got to make sure you're clean here, right? This is the quietest Blake's ever been. And so, so I'm amazed by this. But to brag, to brag on Blake, he he, our, he and our tight end group are completely selfless. You know, they they embrace um, doing the dirty work. They right. embrace doing all the stuff that people don't want to do. They don't get glory. They don't get credit. They don't ask for glory. They don't ask for credit. They joke about getting the ball. He doesn't really care. You know, if he gets to catch it, great. But it's not going to make a difference to right. him. You know, and, and that's why I love him. And then the cool thing about Blake, too, is he brings constant energy. You know, and, and as you get late in the season, sometimes it is. It's, a, it's tougher to get ready for practice, yeah. right? And he's got nonstop energy, and it's contagious, and it rubs off on our guys in a good way. And so, no, he, he is he's awesome. And so I'll brag on him because he's not doing it himself, but he's done a really, really good job for us. And he's made a big difference in our run game. He really has a tremendous difference and a big difference in our pass game and his ability to protect. He seems very reserved since you said that. Uh, <laughs> I just looked, I can tell he's – very, very reserved right now, but save that energy for Saturday afternoon, right? No doubt. It'll come out. It'll right. be there. <laughs> All right, Zach, your turn, my friend. Where you? Uh, give us your hometown. Uh, I'm from a small town, Spencerville, Ohio. Right, Spencerville. And uh, tell us about your path that brought you to Tiffin University. Uh, like we said previously, my, uh, my brother went here. So uh, coming out of my senior year of high school, I had a couple schools uh, to choose from. And then obviously he made a big impact on my decision, so I decided to come to Tiffin. Well, you're a dragon here now. You're playing a linebacker position, so a lot of times in practice or in game time, you're going against guys like Blake Darnell over there. And, yep, yep. you know, you look at the two of you, he's a little bit bigger than you are, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure the quickness that you got over over Blake. But talk a little bit about that uh, linebacking position and what you like playing about so much. Uh, it's, 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 not a, it's not as much as, uh, you know, being physical or knowing what you're doing. It's like at the linebacker position, you're playing with everybody. Right. You're dropping back in coverage. You're playing with the front four that you have. So, like, in the middle of uh, helping out, stopping the run, helping stopping the pass, there's just something about it that, like, you're all over the place. You're always in on almost every single play. So. Well, and talking about stopping the run, you know, you're the defensive line in front of you has been fantastic this year. And they're taking control of that offensive line and making room for you guys to come up there and make some tackles. Talk about the work that they put in and how that makes your job easier. Yeah. Uh, our, our defensive uh, line, one of the most hardworking people that I've been around during practice. I mean, Charlie Cleveland, I I mean, I, I look at his game and it just amazes me what he can do. And then like A.J. Wright, Marv, Cam, and all the rest of the guys, you know, they put in so much work and then mm -hmm. why would I let them down? So right. Let, let, they do so much work up front. Why would I let them like That's the exactly right attitude right there, isn't it, Coach? There's one guy relying on the other ten guys on the field, and you don't want, never want to let that guy down when no. they're busting their tail in front no. of you, so you can make your yeah, yep. to make your job easier. And then oh. you let them down. It's yeah, I can see it on your face, exactly. like it just happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like no, no, they, they work their tails off, and they, right. they deserve it. They deserve it. They they work extremely hard, and they they make my job so much more simple. It's, it's it's unreal. And there's three levels of the defense. The secondary has had a very nice year this year as well. Very opportunistic guys back there. Absolutely. They, 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 they know how to make plays. They know how to make plays. The, they're a bunch of athletic guys that can fly around. So what are you studying here at TU? Uh, I'm studying exercise science. And what's your plan when it's time to take the pads off? Uh, <laughs> uh, I just got accepted to two chiropractic schools. Awesome. So, uh, I'm going to go over to my graduate school. All right. Well, a big tall guy like me has a bit of a back issue so i'll be calling you in a few years when you get done there with your chiropractor school so coach just like every week you bring in three home run hitters these guys are just excellent uh, young men and and excellent ambassadors for not only uh, your football program but for tiffany university as well no doubt no that they, they'll be um these will be guys that'll be around you know obviously blake's blake's done and uh and i think he'll be around the program for a long time and guys that a guy that we'll be proud to have as a graduate zach too and aj when it's his time and 
um, you know, I think uh, I think the cool thing is, um, you know, what we have now are really high level, high character student athletes. Right. And they become high level, high character alums and guys that you're proud that that wear the Tiffin brand out in the out in the country. So, guys, let's let me just ask you. We'll start with AJ and work our way down. Just give me something um, something about just your time here at Tiffin University that you think will take with you as one of those great memories that's always going to make Tiffin University a part of who you are after you know, 10, 20, 30 years down the road? Definitely the, the it's pretty cliche, but the friendships. I mean, Absolutely. That's it, part of it, man. Right. Like, I mean, we live, I don't live with Zach or Blake, but we see each other every day. And it's going to be so weird come a year or two from now. Right. And we're all sitting wherever we're at and it's not just walk in the house and there's Zach sitting there doing homework or whatever, right. you know. Or well, that it's, – it's, I'm going to call it cliche, man. It's, it is what it is. Yeah. You, so people – Every university, especially a small university, a lot of it is what you make out of it. The people you get involved with and the things you get involved with. And that's a huge part of it, the friends you make. And hopefully they're friends that you're going to have for the next 20, 30, 40 years. So, all right, Blake, how about you, man? Uh, I'm going to be a copycat. I would say the same thing. Uh, Like during the summers when we're the only people here pretty much on campus. So we're all like constantly – like I slept at their house for pretty much all camp. Just (laughs) being like I never – Never left. So I mean, right. it's, it's like having a bunch of brothers, and it's it's gonna be hard to beat. So right, absolutely, it's gonna be hard when it's done. I bet, I bet, absolutely. I mean, blood, sweat, and tears, right? Yeah. Zach, uh, the friendships, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna say it, 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 it feels like home. Right, it's home. I, if there's a place I can always come back to, or go see somebody, or like talk about something. It's these guys. It's these guys. You know, it's a big family here. And uh, Coach Reiser and the staff have done a terrific job of that. You know, first uh, first thing I uh, got from when we when we got the new coaching staff was a uh, family. Right. Big big emphasis on family and it feels like home. It's That's perfect. Here. Who's your Who's your position coach? Uh, coach Durr. Talk a little bit about Coach Durr and the work he gives you guys. Uh, coach Durr is uh, he's my guy. He's awesome. Uh, always bringing the juice. Always bringing the juice. Uh, you know, uh, when he first came in here during the spring, and uh, we didn't have a head coach necessarily, and then uh, he he was a big uh, family proponent too. Mm-hmm. Each family, family, family. If you guys want to do anything special, it has to be done through chemistry and bonding. Right. And so uh, we really took that took that to heart. And then when Coach tries to arrive, yeah, he said the same thing, same thing. You know, you preach it so much, and then you re- you don't realize it until you're backed up against the wall, right? The goal line. Yeah, you, you know. You just gotta make plays. Right. And all of a sudden, you can rely. You can rely on your brothers around you. Mm-hmm. you Built that bond so much, and then, like I said, so you just don't want to let them die. Blake, how about your? Who's your position coach? Uh, mine's Coach Spencer. Tell us a little bit about working with Coach Spencer. Uh, like, I think three out of the last four years, we didn't have a tight ends coach here, and when they came in, when Coach Reiser and them came in, he, um, Coach Spencer, took over as a tight ends coach, and. He's been he's been awesome. He, like he um, he knows that we're like an older group of guys, and that mm-hmm. we we know what we're doing out there. And he doesn't really harp on us too much, but he just lets us play. That's, he doesn't want to over flood us with like information and technique and stuff. He's like, if you got what you guys are doing works, then keep doing what you're doing. Right. Yeah. AJ, Sam. Uh, my my position coach is this guy right here. Right. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about working with this guy. <laughs> you know, it's a it's a different relationship than I would say most of the other guys have because. Me and Coach Reiser and Nick and uh, Riley Adolph and Jay all are in the staff room with him for right. one to two, three hours a day. You know, maybe not three hours, but today we were in there a little longer. But it's, you know, he's taught us a lot, taught me a lot. I've, I've learned so much, even though he doesn't think I learn anything sometimes. <laughs> but, but uh yeah, You're still soaking it in, though, yeah, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Still soaking it in. But, yeah, it's been great. I've really enjoyed him letting me sit sit in there and be a QB for the year. Right. Well, Coach, uh, big one said this Saturday, Hillsdale coming to town. And next week we'll bring a bunch of the seniors on out here at the uh, the Wall Street Pub and Grill. But, uh, yeah, kids talking about, you know, the word family being used by everybody and everybody talking about the things they're going to cherish the most or the relationships they've made with the young men that are it's in true. their locker room. And it's just fantastic. Keep it going, man. That's what it is. Thank you. Yeah. All right, this Saturday, you got your game on uh, video at the Great Midwest Digital Network. I'll have that link up for you at the uh, GoTippinDragons.com page. Just click on the football tab, click on schedule. You get the link to the 
video stream right there. The game on radio be at TUDragonRadio.com as well as at Coast Country 100.9 on the FM dial. We'll get our pregame show started. Let's see, it's 1 o'clock kickoff. We'll get started this week about 11.30 at WTUD and join Coast Country 100.9 at 12.30. Anything else, guys? You want to say hi to mom, dad, anybody before we let you guys go? Hey, mom. Hey. <laughs> You never know who to say hi to. Say hi to mom. It's always easy. Exactly. What they do. Exactly. That's easy fun. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much. Coach, go get him this Saturday. He's going to yes, get sir. another win, and we'll talk about it next week and get ready for our final one after that. Come out and see us. Frost Count now at 1 p.m. Frost Count now at 1 o'clock this flooded. coming Saturday. He's Coach Chris Rice, and I'm Russ Snyder, Voice of the Dragons, and this has been the Tippin' Dragon Football Radio Show, live from Wall Street. Welcome to